don't need any introduction they're one of the most popular bands on headbangers ball at mtv europe and i'm joined by sebastian and snake as well so it's lovely to see you again and congratulations for a great show did you have fun shucks <laughs> 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 yes absolutely i mean i think you'd have to be dead not to have your heartbeat being pumping by that fucking crowd sorry that's all right. Yeah. We don't mind swearing. Oh, you don't? No. Oh, yeah, this is UK. OK, <laughs> UK, let's play ball! Um, Very difficult conditions for you out there, because <laughs> it was really Here, windy and yeah, wet, I'm going to do an it? imitation of somebody. Here's I want me. you to tell me who this was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was that? It was you, yeah, I thought you so. Were there. If you were there, you know that that was my entrance. I was working on it for a while. I've been taking dancing lessons, and I, I felt it came off all right. <laughs> you didn't hurt yourself. <laughs> Just my butt. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, congratulations are also in order. Sebastian got married a few weeks ago. Shucks. Are you, uh, how did that work out? Are you really happy? Yeah, have a seat. You're too tall. Um, it worked out great. And you know what sucks? AIDS fucking blows, doesn't it? 
it's kind of a drag. I think we were all You don't lucky. have to worry about that anymore. Exactly, because I got checked out two weeks, and I'm like, clean as a whistle. <laughs> I can say the same for myself. Thank you, I said, I said. Because uh, it's a drag because, you know, it's changed a lot of rockers' lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you stick your dick in something, and it comes out, it's like sawdust. You know, you're going like, what, what was up with that? Excuse me, Doc, my dick. <laughs> Excuse me, but we, we better be get back to the subject in hand, I think, actually. Well, what I was saying is that, mm -hmm. you know, if you live that same life as you did in 79 or 80, it's like you come off the road and your your tool looks like the back of a frog, you know? It's like green veins, warts. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, have I met you? <laughs> so being someone that, you know, enjoys boning safely, might I add. Good, thank but you for that public I, service announcement. See, but my problem was is that I don't dig rubbers because, you know, it's kind of not the same. Okay, and talking of rubbers... Oh, wait, you're allowed to say that. So <laughs> my choice, just like George Michael, choose monogamy. Okay. All right. Well, um, I was wondering, how did Donington compare? This is changing the subject completely. How did Donington compare to when you supported Guns N' Roses at Wembley Stadium last August? It's quite a bit colder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Snake, would you like to comment on yeah, this? Say the least. Guns and the Guns, blah, the Guns N' Roses thing was amazing. I, I mean, because eighty thousand people chanting "Get the fuck out" and you're banned from Wembley for life yeah. is a pretty awesome. Well, good for him. I mean, he's ballsy motherfucker excuse me so uh to come back to dyington though and be second on a bill because it's such a prestigious event mm -hmm. and with all the great bands that are on it i mean slayer was the first time i saw him and i was blown away so mm -hmm. i was pretty amped when we went on mm -hmm. and just to be a part of the whole thing with iron maiden and everything it was very psyched so i think everyone had a really good time it's like the ice capades <laughs> when you refer to the ice capades are you refer <laughs> silence please are you referring to the conditions on the stage being that of ice? Yeah, referring to your uh, gallant maneuvering across the stage. <laughs> I've been taking dancing lessons, what can I say? <laughs> okay, actually Slayer are particular favorites of yours, aren't they? Yeah, we talked about that last show. Yeah, even I got a memory that good. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> now, has Donington always been like a goal for you guys? Um, absolutely. You know, it, what I was saying on stage that as of the last like two years, heavy metal has been pushed underground again. Like it's like '78 all over, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it takes balls to say you're in heavy metal now, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good to get um, the front runner of the band from that age, Iron Maiden. You know, mm -hmm. like fucking. What can I say about the Maiden? Yeah. And then you know the forerunners of thrash or death metal or whatever mm -hmm. Slayer, mm -hmm. and then the forerunners of like uh, short-haired metal us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Thunder, who is a classic English band, you know. I think it's really quite a, you know, a cool, a cool bill. Cool definitely, bill. definitely. Plus, uh, plus that guy in Almighty Ricky's cute, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, I wish I'd seen him all day. I haven't seen him for hours. Oh, he's sexy. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, I mean, we were just saying then that you got banned from uh, Wembley. Um, now, people were obviously expecting you to be co controversial today, but was it really important to you that the music did the talking today? It wasn't important that Wembley to be controversial. Really? All we did was go out there and read a letter, you know. Mm -hmm. People make things out of, you know, actions, you know. So uh, it's always our intent to, like, you know, play as good as we can. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> okay, but the method, and, uh, the and, and you know, and just go out there and do what we do. If something happens because of it, then that's one thing. But it's not like we go, "Holy shit! I know this is gonna get me banned. I'm gonna do it." Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we had no idea that that would happen. That that would be that uptight. Mm -hmm. You know, the people, those people, brand counts are like pretty fucking wound up. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought that was a really good thing you did because nobody should have the right to censorship like that. That's right. Really, when you have eighty thousand people that are sitting there and on Here's your side, I got long arms. <laughs> when you got 80,000 people that are sitting there and looking at the band and, and, and looking at him reading this letter and going, this sucks, this letter sucks, and saying, get the fuck out of the Brent Council. I mean, I don't know how many people in the Brent Council, but there was 80,000 people in Wembley, and I think there's a little bit more in Wembley than there are in the Brent Council. They might be getting their ass kicked soon. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, all right. Thank you very much for that. Now, uh, okay, we're going <laughs> to... It's as good as Slayer's burp, I have to say. Uh, right now, we are going to talk to Skid Row some more, so please stay tuned. But uh, we're going to see these guys live on stage at Donington, and uh, if you don't mind me coining your phrase, they kicked ass. I love this woman. <laughs>
The Headbangers Ball is rocking backstage at the Donington Monsters of Rock Festival. It's total metal mayhem here. And uh, I'm still with Skid Row and Sebastian and Snake are with me. <laughs> and we are not being terribly serious, but I'm going to try and get a more serious stance to this interview right now. Now, uh, you've just released the Donington Gone Wild EP over here. Now, uh, was that, that song could have been written for this event, couldn't it? It's like an anthem. <sighs> yes. Um, the, the cool thing was about that was, uh, you know, jam with Rob Halford on the B side. Yeah, how did that come about? Do you know what? Fucking KK Downing is here. I told you that before the show. What? Fuck, man. You guys have played the song since 1979. He doesn't remember it. <laughs> I, I asked him. I bet he does. Man. I asked him. That's fucked. If I would have known he was there, man, I'd have made him fucking play it anyway. <laughs> That's deliberate. Oh! That was That's for you, the home viewer. <laughs> It that was, was great! It was! Yeah. Now we shot 3D fucking metal mayhem. Now, uh, Delivering the Goods was the one with uh, Rob Halford. <laughs> yeah. How did that come about? Came about, basically we were in Phoenix, and uh, Rob had been at the show. He lives in Phoenix now or whatnot. And Sebastian's like, dude, we gotta do fucking Delivering the Goods. And he's like, Rob and me, we're gonna wield it together. And we're like, cool. And there happened to be a, a 24 track truck there. Mm -hmm. Recording the whole thing, so Just we're like, happened to be one driving by and said, "Hey, hey, hey I might stop in that old Skid Row show in Phoenix." <laughs> so uh, him and Rob got together and and uh, figured it out what parts they're going to do and stuff like that. And we just went up and did it, and it was like right off the right off the cuff, mm -hmm. like no overdubs or anything, as you can tell by my solo, which <laughs> <laughs> is god awful, I might add. Shut the fuck up, crap. Anyways. Um, the thing about Rob Halford that you don't realize until you stand on the stage with the man is that the fucking monitors... Listen to the ending of the part where he goes... So you couldn't hear that because it was so high that only dogs could hear that. <laughs> but when you hear him at the end of that, the friggin' monitors are going... <laughs> it was like... His notes are like piercing right through your fucking skull. <laughs> it's like a, a vocal lobotomy listening to that guy, so... You got to check that out. Yeah, absolutely. And in the U.S., you're releasing a five-track EP. And the U.K. And the U.K. Yeah, well, absolutely. oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yes. Okay. And that's five-track EP, um, five cover versions. And I have a suspicion that each member of the band chose a song by a group that they were influenced by. Is that right? Absolutely. Because you chose Judas I Priest. Cho no, I didn't. You chose... No, I didn't. No? No? I chose Little Wing by oh, right, Jimi Hendrix. Hendrix. right. Who chose Priest? Um, well, we that got added. <laughs> see, see, there's five tunes on it, but uh, Scotty, <laughs> Scotty, <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, pick, play that, song play that, that, play that funky music. <gasps> you guys don't want to hear me sing that. No. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not good. Stop so, uh, well, as it's not on the EP, could you give us a rendition now? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, okay. No, it's not for human consumption. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it didn't work out, so we needed another tune, so we put the priest mm -hmm. tune on there. And you, I, I guess you chose Kiss. Absolutely. I had to. Yes. Well, I mean, because I mean, Gene Simmons was breathing fire up his balls. Right. <laughs> choose Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, growing up and stuff, I mean, I was so influenced by Kiss as uh, most of us in the band were. Mm. And we sit here and still talk about stories when we were like, dude, remember when you were 13 years old and you got your Kiss Army uh, fan club stuff yeah. in the mail? And you're like, oh, right on. You yeah. went to school with your Kiss lunchbox. And I mean, you had Kiss or rock and roll over stickers on your notebook. And, and I mean, the whole bit. And the Kiss love gun, pop gun that came out of the record. And I mean, it had such an impact on my life that I was like, I gotta remember where I started, you know, like mm -hmm. what got me into this whole thing. And I remember being like, I don't know, nine years old and my brother buying me Dress to Kill and, and Kiss Alive and I, I put on Dress to Kill and Come On Love Me came out. I was like, oh man, this is massive. So, mm -hmm. I mean. Well, actually, when I did an interview with Kiss recently, they spoke very highly of you guys. No! Did they really? They did, they did. Fucking anyway. right on. Now, you've been on tour for like 18 months. How, how do you guys manage to stop getting like burnt out through such constant touring? I'd get more burnt out if I was working at a factory, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know 
I never fucking forgot what uh, the whole purpose of this was to do was just to play music every fucking night and I don't think that uh, being jaded there's no problem with that with this band we're about the most unjaded band you could find because we really dig it you know I just got the poster from Donington fucking, ooh, I'm gonna get everybody to sign it and shit <laughs> you know, I mean I really get excited about rock and roll and it really turns me on mm -hmm. so there's uh no complaining or being burnt out. I mean, if we are burnt out, our, we don't realize yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Because our bodies, you know. Just and stuff like this, there. I mean, it energizes you. I mean, you get the chance to go out and see a bunch of great bands live, and you're like on the side of the stage, you go, right me and him are on the side of the stage, you're in Slayer going, oh, this is fucking heavy, you yeah, know? He's like yelling at Rob, going, dude, look at that fucking guy. Yeah. Angel of Death! Yeah, yeah. Okay, very quickly, we're running out of time. What's your plans now? Go watch Iron Maiden. <laughs> and then back home, and then... Yeah, back home, and then go to uh, Southeast Asia, Taiwan, Taipei, Bangkok. Um, Around the world. Japan, and yeah, then... We're uh, going to some weird places, man. Yeah, Bangkok we're going, is... We're going to... We're going to fucking do in two nights in Manila. Yeah. <laughs> it's the thriller killer in Manila. Manila. <laughs> okay, well, I, we've just about run out of time, but I want to say thank you very much for joining me again uh, on Headbangers Ball. It is a pleasure to have you guys, and... Uh, <laughs> what's going on here <laughs> and, uh, and that gives you a hint of what's coming up next because it is more live performance from Skid Row at Donington and uh, guess what I think you should really crank it up you can you are the youth God.